Hello Pisces, welcome to your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a timeless reading, so whenever you happen to be watching this, this is the right time for you. All right. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I'm merely the messenger. I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading, well, it's you. And Pisces, this is the queen of swords. So let's put that into some context and see what's going on here. Um, as I do this, I want to also say that if there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. Continuing with the Dove and Serpent spread, Path of the Serpent here. Okay, we're going to do a mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. Let's do Rider Waite Smith. I mean, this is the card that we're going to set aside. We're not going to look at it until the very end of the reading. And hopefully that'll tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need at the end. So, we've got major, 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 major. We've got some earth, some water, some earth, a little bit of air, some water, some fire. Pretty good stuff going on. The only air energy that we see is this one here, the first card, the Queen of Swords. And I gotta say, we have this death energy, okay? I think that um, you have to let go of something, okay? It could be an idea, it could be a belief, it could be a hope or a wish. It could be a part of your life that you know is just not, not leading you to where you want to go. Um, the way we see some of these other cards, it is, um, it is an indication that in order for you to progress, in order for you to really achieve what you want to achieve, physically, you know, on this plane and in the spiritual world, there's something that you have to let go of. It's almost like we, um, I, I kind of feel like it's something we've already lost or we're in the process of losing. And now it really is just about kind of going through the mourning period, right? The, the grief of it and letting it go. Okay. Now we start with this queen of swords energy because I think this is something that you know. I think that you have clarity on this. The clarity is coming in, at least, right? And you're able to see this from a, a, a kind of a higher vantage point. You're able to at least temporarily detach yourself from the situation and look at it from above, see it for what it is. You see it clearly, okay? You see it clearly. It doesn't make it a fun thing. It doesn't make it a pleasurable experience. But you're able to see it for what it is right? At least for a brief moment, okay? Because the queen here of, of swords has kind of taken off the mask, has detached themselves from their personality, from their persona, from the circumstances and events down here in the real world to just get a glimpse of what is the relative truth, okay? To what is relative reality right now. And um, I think so. I think this moment of clarity is coming, okay? And the situation that you're getting the clarity on, that you're seeing for what it is, and you're getting this kind of experience of, of the truth of things has to do with whatever you're in the process of letting go of, right? It's okay to feel grief. It's okay to mourn the loss of this. And we have to let it go, okay? And this could be a relationship that's not working. It could be... Um, letting go of uh, you know, our childhood home, or letting go of trauma, letting go of, of memories, um, you know, letting go of people, all sorts of things, okay? And this is going to resonate in different ways for different people. But this is about the process, not so much about the details of what it is, but, but why we have to let it go, and what's involved in that process of letting it go, okay? I think in the recent past, we had this Four of Cups, and I think that whatever this thing is that we're letting go of, I think it's been around, it's been with us for a long time. It could be a person, a relationship, could be a memory, could be some trauma, could be whatever. 
But I think it's been something we've been holding on to for a long time. And in it, it, looking at it, it's kind of kept us a little bit frozen. You know, four of cups here. It's kind of stagnating. This is some water that's not really moving. It kind of, it's, it's got too much structure. It's too solid. So it's like a cube of ice right now. It's like a cube of ice. And even in our physical mundane life, see a four of discs up here feels like in our professional life maybe our physical uh you know health and well-being our physical development our, our career development we've been a little bit frozen there too you know and so four of discs four of cups our our heart's been kind of frozen and our our physical progress our profession our you know we've been kind of frozen there too and I think this is what we're aware of, and I think that's, that's really the, the impulse for us to say, it's time to let this thing go. It's time to move on from this. Because we've been frozen like this for a while, it seems. Maybe a few months, maybe a few years. But now, with this Queen of swords, we're getting the objective vantage point. We're seeing things a lot more clearly now. It's just been a matter of time. Now the time has come to see things in this kind of from this new angle. And we're seeing that things are frozen and we've got to get a move on with things. We can't stay stuck here in the same position forever. Now beneath the surface, we have Mars and Capricorn with the three of discs. Mars in Capricorn. This is some real, this is a real willpower that just says, I'm going to just by my own sheer strength, I'm going to bust out of this like frozen solid, like ice cube that I'm in. I'm going to bust out of it and I'm going to move. So the three of discs, this is really you getting to work. This is you really starting to kind of power up. You're turning all the switches on. Things are starting to heat up. You're warming up the engine. And you're just going to break right out of this four kind of mode that we're in, this frozen state. You're going to break right free, All right? Breaking free. And that's not an easy experience either, because what do we have in the immediate future? Well, the hanged man. The hanged man, it, it, this isn't comfortable. This isn't luxury. This isn't, um, this isn't a, a pleasant experience, you know? This is a very uncomfortable place to be. Having this new perspective on things doesn't mean it's going to make it easier. Right? But this is also acceptance. This is also surrendering to this idea that, look, we've been in this frozen state. We've been grieving or mourning this thing. It's time to let it go. So the hanged man really here is letting go is trusting the divine, right? The, the onk and the serpent around the ankle there at the top. This person is trusting the universe, trusting spirit, trusting your own guardian angels, trusting the, um, you know, the, the spiritual world, let's say, whatever you want to call it, trusting that and letting go. Right? The hands are open. Yes, the hands are nailed to the thing. It's part of the imagery. But the hands are open. The hands are not grasping on anything. We've let go. We're trusting and we let go. Okay? That's what we're choosing to focus on here with this. And we've realized the necessity of this through this kind of clarity, this different perspective that we had. We've, we're, we're starting to see things for what they are, and we're starting to admit to ourselves that, yes, we need to just kind of trust in the universe. We need to let go of this. We've, we've been frozen in place. We've grieved. It's time to move. Time to move on. So we're warming up the engines. I like this one with the Mars and Capricorn. We're really starting to get uh, our energy back and we're starting to wake up our muscles and get loose again. You know, Moving over to the path of the servant, we see a two of wands. So this is you, really you with your force in one hand, your fire in the other. Right? And this is you doing your will. This is you getting that motivation. Now your engine's warm. Now you're ready to go out and, and work and get what you want and pro progress, right? To reach for things, to, um, 
to try to um, fulfill your aspirations. Right? We're, we've melted these two blocks of ice, and now we're really, we're really heated up. We're ready to move forward. Well, what are we, what are we looking for, right? What does happiness and abundance look like for you? And that's the big question. Because the Three of Cups here is in the position of your environment. There is happiness and abundance all over the place. This card's Mercury and Cancer. So with Mercury, we need a little bit of discernment. We have to have a plan. We have to organize our thoughts and our will and our ambitions, our understanding, our trust in the divine, our connection to the divine. We have to know what we're after. Okay. We have to know what we feel in our heart that we want. What is, what is going to have that kind of emotional fulfillment for us? We know what loss is, right? We know what suffering, we know what grieving is. We know what letting go is. Now we want to bring something in to us. Okay. But what does that look like? We have to figure it out. Okay. The next card is the Art or Temperance card. This is being able to blend together this fire and this water, right? We have the, the fire and the water kind of with warming up our engines and going after what we want. Well, we have to have that strategy, you know? And I think that we can accomplish this, uh, this fulfillment, this mental and emotional, rational kind of thing and the spiritual emotional fulfillment the fire and the water we can blend this together and that's exactly what we see with the two of wands three of cups it's the fire and the water it's our ambition it's our um it's our will it's our expression it's us reaching for things and taking things into us and this is the achievement of that so this is a very positive card very positive card. This is um, a card that tries to keep you in a balanced kind of mind frame. You know, you don't want to go to one extreme or the other. You don't want to have too much fire. You don't want to have too much water. You know, you don't want to reach for too much that we're using too much force. But we don't want to bring too much into ourselves. You know, we don't want to be too much like water and be too yielding, be too adaptable to circumstances. No, we have to decide really what we want and how do we apply our strength to get what we want in terms of our spiritual fulfillment, our happiness, our pursuit of happiness. And we're ending with the moon card because this, this is showing me that the time for all of this energy is close at hand. Okay? Okay. This is a reading, I think, for the next few days, the next week or two. We'll probably check in with you Pisces in a few more days, maybe three, four days, we'll do another Pisces reading. But I think from the time you're watching this, a few days, I think you'll see a lot of this energy starting to manifest, and that's what this moon card's about. Because right now, you may still be in the darkness up here, the lunar landscape where everything is just kind of dark and confusing, and painful and uncertain, we're still in this kind of grieving process, right? But soon that sun will rise, and that sun is the clarity of this Queen of Swords. And that clarity, that sunrise, sets into motion all of this other energy. Okay? And that's what the that's what the moon card is here to represent. The moon card's here to say, look, all of this hasn't really happened yet, but you're right on the cusp of it. Okay, right on the cusp of it. Uh, we're going to look at the mystery card now. I would like to see a six uh, of anything. Six of cups would be nice. We get the hanged man again. Okay, so the biggest problem for you, I think, is going to be trusting that um, trusting that our weight can be can be held by that bow, by that branch. Um, and also this card with the, the figure looks a little bit different, kind of hiding something behind their back, right? 
So this is the idea that while we should be letting go and trusting, we might be trusting, but maybe we're not letting go completely. Maybe we're still kind of hiding something behind our back. I kind of want to say, okay, show me your hands, you know, because maybe we, we're acting like we've let go, but really we're still holding on to a piece of it. Okay. I hope that resonates with you. And I hope that you understand that in order to let go, we have to let go. If you're still holding on to something, then we haven't let go. You know, there's no halfway. There's no partial letting go. Uh, Pisces, we're going to go ahead and do an extended, and if you want to stick around for that, which I hope you will, uh, just click on the link that's right here in the corner, and you can have access to all of the extended readings, not just for Pisces, but for every sign. Okay, we've done hundreds of readings. They all, I think, pretty much they all have an extended, so uh, you can check out all of those if you want. Um, thank you so much for letting me read for you here on Dove and Serpent Tarot.